Hello everybody. Today I wanted to talk about 10 things that I think that everybody should have if they are a filmmaker or photographer that will help make their work better or just essentials that they need. So let's get into it. First thing that I think that every filmmaker or photographer should have is the correct outfit. Now if you're going to be an actual photographer, you need to have the standard outfit. So let me change it to that and be right back. And boom. Now everybody will know that you are a photographer. If you are in the winter, make sure to swap out that hat for a nice little beanie. Makes everything warm and you still look like an indie photographer. Now on to the actual tips and tricks that I have. First thing that I think that every photographer and especially every videographer should have is a good set of lights. Now I have these that I just bought off of Amazon. I believe they were $30 a piece. Really cheap, but they add so much more to the set that you have. You can transform a bedroom in a simple setup like this into, into a much more professional looking studio. Now this is still my bedroom. As you can see, I have one light that is in the corner of red, one light in the corner that's bluish green. And you can use these really anywhere. You can use them to light the subject. I have one in front of me as well. Um, these run off of just a standard USB into a wall adapter, plugged into some power strips, which is actually my next point. One thing that I believe is extremely overlooked when I have seen other videos on YouTube is talking about power strips. I think that this is essential to every kit. There have been many times that I have wanted to light an area, but I haven't been able to reach or find an outlet nearby. So I've just grabbed one of these, plugged it in, and it makes everything so much easier. It's not necessarily a specific to photography and filmmaking tip, but it's always good to have something to plug your power supply needs into. The next thing that I think is necessary for any photographer is a good sturdy bag. This one here is from Peter McKinnon and Nomadic. I was so happy to get it and it's one of my favorite bags that I've used. The last one that I had was actually got off of Facebook Marketplace and the zipper broke so I got this when it came out. This bag itself is fantastic. It is waterproof, weather resistant and just an overall great bag, but I'm not necessarily saying that this is the bag that you should get, it just works for me. It's small, compact, and if you would like to see what's inside, let me know down in the comments. I'd be happy to do a bag tour so that you can see everything that I normally carry with me when I'm going out. The next thing that I think is necessary is a good strap that works for your type of camera. Here is my camera that I use, and I think that this is a great strap. I made it myself just from a leather belt with a couple of rivets on the side, um, a couple of screws that work nicely for what I need. Um, this is a pretty heavy camera with this lens on it. I have a couple other lenses that aren't as heavy, so I might switch it out for more of a strap like this. This is what I used on it before when it had a uh, lighter lens on it. It's just a, I believe it's called a climbing strap or a rope strap. Um, just made of some climbing rope, comes in many different colors, and it has these handy little clips that clip right to your camera so you don't have to worry about taking it off over your head or not. Found that this is really helpful. There are even some straps like this one that are almost like a guitar strap, um, which makes it really comfortable for carrying around on long times outside. The next couple things that I think are necessary are all of the accessories that go along for being a filmmaker and photographer. Uh, by that I'm meaning SD cards and an SD card case. I think that this is a fantastic way to keep all of your cards together because otherwise you're going to be scrambling around in your bag when you need a new one. Uh, this one is by Skoloo and I got it off of Amazon for about $10-$15. Um, it's waterproof and is perfect for carrying and categorizing all of your SD cards. Um, I would also say you need things like backup batteries for whatever camera you're using, uh, chargers, and also a light meter if you are doing film photography. It's better to have one that is an external light meter because sometimes the one on the camera is not perfectly dialed in. Um, so I would definitely recommend having an external light meter that really helps with getting those perfect exposure shots. The next thing that I would recommend is specifically geared toward filmmakers or people who are going into the YouTube video space. Um, it's something that I only recently found that I needed and that helped a lot and that is 
some type of writing instrument that does not have to do with the internet. There is so much um, notifications and just distractions that can happen nowadays with working either on your phone or on a computer while writing that it just distracts you from writing scripts, uh, writing video ideas, and I found that a typewriter for me is the perfect way. It doesn't get my hand fatigued when I'm writing, um, and it's just a really great way to get the creative thoughts out. I have two, which is this Royal Quiet Deluxe, and I also have a larger desk model of the IBM Selector 2 that I just recently got, and both are a fantastic way to get your creative writing out, your scripts, your video ideas, without having the distractions and notifications that come with working on a computer or a phone with access to the internet. Something that I would definitely recommend, especially for somebody who is starting YouTube or filming yourself, is having a good sturdy tripod. Now, this is what I'm filming on right now. I have this set up just on my desk so I can talk right into it. But I think that it is necessary to have a good tripod that you can rely on that is easy to take apart, to dismount, and isn't too complicated, especially when you're starting out. Uh, this one is light, it's compact, it's sturdy, able to take places, and even do some photography, long exposure shots with film on it. It's just a great travel tripod. Probably going to upgrade here soon, but I think that it's definitely good to get a cheap one to start out with, but one that you can rely on for future use. And similar to that, but I think that it deserves a category of its own, because I really think that it is helpful is a remote for whatever camera you are using. Not sure if all cameras have a remote or not, but I know that this one that I'm filming on does. Um, it just really helps with things like zooming so that I don't have to do that manually or reach up to the camera and fix it. Um, I can also start and stop the shots. It's just, it's really handy to have and I didn't know how much I needed it until I got it and now I use it all the time. The next thing that I think should be pretty self-evident for any filmmaker or photographer and the last thing that I'm going to talk about are cameras themselves. Now I got really lucky to have a collection, a giant collection of cameras that I got um, and if you would like me to go through them and show you them, I would love to do that. Just let me know in the comments if that's something that you're interested in. Um, I have two giant boxes of old film cameras that I am currently fixing and trying to sell when I am able to and also uh, a video camera and a digital photo camera as well. Um, I really love collecting them and seeing what the differences are between them. So if you'd like me to go through my collection, just let me know. But that wraps up all of the filmmaking and photography gear that I think that everybody should have in their collection or should be getting along the way when they are able to. Thank you so much for joining me on this video. Like, comment, and subscribe if you would like. If not, that's okay. Uh, thank you for joining me and I will see you in the next video. I know, I know, I said goodbye already, but I just wanted to pop back in and say that there seemed to be some confusion over the title of the channel. It recently changed and I forgot totally to mention about it. Somebody came up to me and asked why I had changed, so I thought that I'd give it here. Um, Gingerbread Photos was the name previously given to this channel. It's still uh, the name of my Instagram account, and that will be remaining, but I found that when I was telling people about my channel that a bunch of uh, gingerbread recipes were actually coming up and taking away from the possibility that I would be found out more on the platform. So I wanted to change it and I also thought that I wanted to give it a bit more meaning. So Clear Focus Films is the new title of this channel and I want to give clear focus to creative people. Also Clear Focus has a double meaning with the uh, relation to photography and video getting a clear focus on the subject that you were shooting. So I thought that it gave it a bit more meaning and would be found easier.